Hi, I'm Steve Weierman, and today I'm going to talk about object-oriented programming. This is going to be the first in a series of mini lectures and tutorials on getting started programming with Java. Now today I'm not actually going to do any programming, I'm just going to talk about what objects and classes are because they're very important concepts in uh, programming in Java or programming really in any uh, modern uh, environment today. So first thing I want to talk about is what is an object. Now you can think of an object as like an object in the real world. For example, let's say we have a book. Here's a book, uh, Abstract Algebra. It is written by W.E. Deskins. It was published by Dover. It's copyright 1964 and 1992 by Deskins. Uh, and um, it has... Excuse, excuse, excuse. Looks like about 624 pages. So the reason why I just rambled all that stuff off is because these are the things that define this particular instance of this book. You could also say that it's a paperback, uh, it's in relatively good condition, and so on. So those various attributes that I listed are things that define all books. All books have a title. All books have an author. They have a publication date. They have a publisher. They have a number of pages. Those are the attributes that make up what a book is. So, for example, if uh, we have a different book, uh, it won't have the same title, it won't have the same author, but it will still have a title, a author. Uh, so those things we could say are the attributes of a book. Uh, so an object is a thing in our, our programming environment, in our program, that has attributes. They also have methods. Methods are ways we interact with the object. So for instance, if we have another object called person, a uh, person might have a method called read, where which takes in a book, and then we have a way of expressing how a person reads a book. It's kind of a silly example, but it, it gets the point across. So you have methods and you have attributes, and those two things are what comprise an object. Now a class is the blueprint for those objects. So a class has the list of all the attributes and all the methods that make up an object. So those two things uh, taken together are an object. This process of combining the functionality, the methods of an object with the attributes, with the data uh, of our program is called encapsulation. It's a big word, it's not something you really need to know to actually write Java programs, but it's just a good concept to understand. We're, when we're doing object-oriented programming, we're combining our data with our functionality in a very logical uh, and a, a way that makes sense because in the real world we interact with objects and we have other objects that interact with objects. And when you think about the various programs that you use on your computer or on your mobile device, this also makes sense. Take for instance a calculator. A calculator is a great example. Uh, so I'm going to start my calculator application here. A calculator has buttons and a text field and all those things that make up what a calculator is as a whole. So the buttons have a functionality, they interact with other objects in our calculator application. If I click on the button 8 here, the number 8 shows up in our text field. If I click on one of the other functions here, plus, and then I do something like 2, uh, those also show up in the text field, and the calculator 
uh, on the back end is keeping track of all the data I'm typing in here. It's not just showing up on the text field. Somewhere in the logic, it knows uh, what I've typed in. It's probably keeping that in some sort of stack. Uh, we'll talk about stacks later. I, I don't want to bog us down with too many details. And I can put in other, uh, other values here. And I can also use the keyboard to enter these things. So I could do something like that. Um, so that's, of course, going to return 30 if I hit enter. So that's how calculators work. And that's also just a good example of how objects come together in a program and work. So for another example, let's uh, just do a student in course example, because that will give you a good idea of how different uh, objects may interact with each other. So let me just um, start up this uh, IDE I like to use called Genie. Uh, Genie is a very straightforward IDE. It has no frills. You can use it for multiple languages. Uh, it's cross-platform. It's available for um, for Linux, Windows, and Mac. You can download it at genie.org. I think it's genie.org. Let me just double check that real quick. Yep, genie.org. Spelled G-E-A-N-Y. Um, this isn't the IDE I'm going to be using for most of the lectures. I just want to use it to jot down a very quick example, and I want syntax highlighting. So let me save this as, just to get a, uh, make it clear that I'm doing Java syntax highlighting. So I'm not going to do a full example. Uh, don't type this in. I just want to show you uh, what the syntax might look like. Uh, we'll probably revisit this example in later lectures. So let's do class student. And what makes up a student? Well, a student consists of several attributes. The student probably has names. middle initial yes I know I said I wasn't gonna do any coding but um, I think it's just good to see what the example might look like a uh, student may have a major and a student probably has an ID number Now with every, well, not with every class, but with nearly every class we create, we're going to have what's called a constructor. A constructor is a method that defines how an object is created. And just to review, an object, again, is the instance of a class. So a constructor for student may look something like And it would probably take in some default values for these things that we've created. Oops. And IDs in the US at schools are typically social security numbers. So I'm just going to model that. Now that's just one method. Uh, we may have in our student example. 
Another method might be um, things to get and set the attributes, the values that are in uh, in our student object. So, in, for instance, not all students are going to be named Joe T. Student. Uh, so we want to be able to set those values another way. And you can do that by setting uh, attributes or method attributes in the uh, constructor. We're not going to talk about that right now. I just want to give you a very, very quick example of how you would create methods that change the values inside our student object. So let's do, it should be public. Uh, and all these examples would be pretty similar. And that's just going to return the value that's in first name. And then the way we set them Something like that. Now, if you have some experience with uh, Java programming before, I know this is not the best style. Uh, but again, this is this is an introductory tutorial. I'll come back to talking about the this keyword and all that other good stuff. Uh, but that gives you an idea of how to create methods and attributes. And uh, we'll go over that in more detail in a later uh, in a later mini lecture. Uh, but just to give you an idea of interaction between objects. Uh, we may have a class course which describes all the uh, courses that are offered at the university. Um, that course has a name, probably has a department and so on. It's going to have a constructor too, not going to go into that. Could be similar to what we did with student. But we may have something like um, a number of students enrolled in a course. Uh, so we need some attribute to keep track of students in a course. And then we would need some method to enroll students in a course. So let's call that method enroll. We're going to enroll some student, whoever this person is, in a course. And the way that would work is, well, actually I'm not going to talk about how that would work right now. Uh, I just want to give you an idea of how these two concepts uh, of uh, classes interacting with other classes uh, works. You have students, they enroll in courses. Um, so you'd have methods that allow you to modify the data in an object, and you have methods that allow you to have objects interact with other objects. So I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I'm going to leave it off there for now. Uh, hopefully you found this useful. And like I said, there will be a whole series of these lectures uh, made available. I'm going to be recording probably five to 10 of these a week. So uh, stop by soon to see the next lecture.